From many Magic the Gathering cards to Commander Legends 2, we've got all the magic news that's fit to chew. But, okay, who wrote this? No, look, I don't care that it rhymes. You made me look like an idiot. Magic. I am a wizard. History. I'm an old wizard. The magic historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, we are here today for another installment of Mega Magic News. I have a number of little news tidbits that we are going to talk about. Some of them are pretty delicious. I got to say the best in Flintstones chewable news increments, whatever that means. If you enjoyed the intro, on this particular video where I said my bones hurt, my bones hurt, I do have my bones hurt merchandise available down in the comment section below if you want to grab some. Now, let's dive into the news, my friends. We've got a number of different items of varying importance, all right? Now, if you haven't already seen it, we're going to start out light, talk about something a little bit silly. The Japanese Strixhaven commercial, it's just 30 seconds long. It features Will Rowan and Ken, uh, not Will and Rowan Kenrith, I should say. I don't know why I turned both their first names into a full person thing, but regardless, it shows the Kenrith twins and a goblin playing Magic the Gathering, which I have to admit is a little bit odd, but overall I found the commercial to be very lighthearted and fun. I wanted to point out that it existed in case you guys wanted to check it out. Now, we have some bigger news in terms of things like Commander, because there are questions being put forth by people like Mark Rosewater asking, would you be interested in Commander Legends 2? Is this something that you would like to see? And I, would, I, I think that at this point, we can all reasonably say that Commander Legends, aside from the fact that it had some significant foil issues, Commander Legends did very, very well as a set, right? It's not like people looked at it and went, okay, this set is terrible. Commander Legends 2 feels like it's pretty much an automatic shoe-in to happen. We've reached the point where Wizards of the Coast has acknowledged that Commander is by far the most popular format in Magic the Gathering. So, products specifically geared towards it. Look at how many Commander decks that we get, guys. We get Commander decks now with every single set. The Space Marine Warhammer 40k cards that are coming at a certain point, what are they going to be? They're going to be Commander decks. So, Commander Legends 2 is pretty much a guaranteed situation, right? That's what we're going to see. Now, there were some questions asked about the breakdown of basically going forwards, how we're going to be looking in terms of Commanders from a more wide color configuration. That might be a little bit of an unwieldy way to say it. What I'm trying to say is people are asking if we're going to be seeing more three, four, and five color commanders, right? The majority of commanders that Wizards of the Coast is creating don't really focus on three color combinations, although we do see that here and there with the commander deck. So for example, Commander Legends, when you break down how many different color combination commanders there are, it turns out they didn't really make any four or five color commanders, as far as, as far as I've seen. And when it comes down to the number of three color commanders, they only comprised about 15% of the commanders in that set, which means 85% of the commanders in Commander Legends were either two colors or one color, right? And so we've got a situation where people want to know, are we going to be getting more of these sort of things? And that's one where it's, we're not, we're not sure, based on the responses that are being given, it's not clear whether we're going to see a ramp up in that. When you do like five color commanders, four color commanders, you do run into more of a situation of like, look, four or five color good stuff. If they make commanders that are too many colors that are too good, you just get to do too much overall, right? And you can see miniaturized examples of that in things like Arena's Brawl, where it, Arena Brawl is kind of like a miniaturized version of Commander, right? So Omnath, for example, when Omnath came out, Omnath wreaked havoc on Brawl. If you make something that's just too efficient and you give it so many colors, you just open the door for too much ridiculousness in Commander. Now, I do know ultimately when it comes to Commander, you have rule zero. So if it turns out that everybody's not happy with what's going on, you can say, hey, 
I don't want I don't want you to use that. I don't want you to use this. But Wizards seems like they're trying to find that sweet spot of designing cards that people can use and won't get kicked out and won't get banned because ultimately if Wizards design co designs commanders that are a failure and nobody uses them, then those commander cards don't help sell products. And ultimately, that's why Wizards of the Coast makes magic cards, is to sell product, right? So it's up in the air how many three, four, and five color commanders we're gonna be seeing when it comes to things like Commander Legends 2. And I, I think the five color commanders are okay when you make them more niche. Like, don't give them generic abilities give them very keyed into a like a very particular concept you know what i mean like you know it doesn't need to be as insane as the atog atog which is literally an atog lord that costs one of every color and makes you sacrifice atogs right like that is not the level that they need to go on oh did you know actually the original atog card in magic the other is just an anagram for goat they just switched the letters around and it's like check it out there you go it's a goat that it just it eats everything that's the concept behind them so the, uh, the next item that we have to talk about on the list is the Strixhaven College Cup that's going on with Arena. So that's, that's coming up where you can represent your particular, your particular college of the five colleges. So the idea behind it is supposed to be get these different things that represent your college. There are the college sleeves and you can get those in one of two ways. You can either fill out Wizards survey questionnaire which is seven questions which will help you determine which school you naturally fit into and then they will email you a code for the sleeves or is it just pop it up on the screen i can't remember 100 percent. i did the survey but i don't remember what happened that's one way or you can just do a quick google search and find all the codes and get all the sleeves you're not just limited to one right you can get all the sleeves but you have to get the sleeves for your school you want to inside the mastery tree sphere where they have the little orbs that give you the styles you can also get an avatar now. So you pick the avatar for your school, you pick the sleeves for your school, and then you can also, the third item that you can use to increase the amount of points you're gonna get is to use the codexes. But the thing about the codexes is they only exist for people who have purchased the mastery pass. So if you don't have the mastery pass, you can't actually do that part. So there's gonna be a number of different events as part of this college cup, right? I think there's gonna be five different events, one for each of the five colleges, and then you accrue points for your college. But the one thing that Wizards of the Coast has left out is what happens if you win? It literally doesn't say, I couldn't find information anywhere on it saying what happens with the points that you win. And I have to say, not telling us what the prize is for winning this event seems like a massive oversight, right? And I expect that probably the events that they're going to create aren't going to be free to enter as well. So you're going to have to spend resources to enter into those events. So I don't know how I feel about the College Cup, but it is something that's going on. So I thought I would touch on it. We have a couple more news items on the list. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there are mini Magic the Gathering cards. There is another mini deck that has been created. I'm going to put a picture of it up on the screen for you here, my friends. This is a mini a Johnny versus Bolas dual deck. So this is essentially a reprint of the dual deck that they created back when they released this one years and years ago. But as you can see from the gigantic hand, that's actually a regular sized hand. And those, those magic cards are super teeny teeny weeny. So if you wanna grab that, you can actually grab it on Amazon right now. I think that this is pretty sweet in terms of a concept. I don't know exactly what it is about miniaturized things that is so endearing and enticing. But seeing those tiny little miniaturized magic cards, like the dude from Honey, I Shrunk the Kid showed up and was like, Honey, I shrunk your deck! And it's like, first of all, did you say deck? Secondly, don't call me Honey. I don't even know you! Stay away from my magic cards, all right? So, the concept behind these is really cool to me. I really like the whole idea of like miniaturized magic cards. And speaking of another interesting idea, unique old bordered cards if you don't know what i'm talking about think about time spiral remastered okay so time spiral remastered had all three of the time spiral sets crammed together into one set but on top of that what they did was they have the time shifted slot where they have new magic cards so cards that exist in the newer years but they're printed in the old school frames which gives them a completely different 
flavor. And the old school, like the old school frame stuff has gone over like gangbusters, right? Like people are going crazy for it, especially the foil versions of these cards. Because Wizards did a pretty good job of picking cards that people were going to want in the old school border. I mean, thought sees anyone, right? So these have been really, really popular. So now we have Wizards kind of sniffing around, seeing how they can make even more off of this. And that has led to a question on the most recent Magic the Gathering survey. So they just put out a Strixhaven survey. And most of it is just like, how often do you play Magic? How do you play Magic or whatever? But the most interesting question that was on the survey was a question saying, how excited would you be about new cards printed with the old frame? And by that, I mean the first time this card is printed, it's printed as an old border card. So instead of old border, like taking a new, a newish card and giving it an old border reprint, we're talking about the initial printing of this card is old bordered, and that might be the only printing of the card. So for me, that is definitely an interesting prospect. So my friends, I hope you found this news to be chewable. You didn't have any problems swallowing. We want everybody to survive, make their way through. Uh, I may end up doing some interesting new streams talking about the Chandelar over on Fantasy Geographic. So if you're not already, if you're not already subscribed over there for the lore videos and you are an enthusiast of old school Chandelar, you're probably going to want to get hooked up over there because it seems like a great place to do that sort of thing. But that's still tentative. Anyways, Thanks for coming by, my friends. I'll leave a link to Fantasy Geographic on the screen for you. List of my patrons, scroll on by, and I will see you all, my friends, next time.